we should do a fucking couples trip to Japan, dude. Just throwing it out there. Oh, what's your one. biggest fear? Us like getting in a huge fight. If there is a cross party fight, like that you is and Hillary really fight, really bad. <laughs> Sierra and you would never fight. I don't think so. And I don't. By the way, I don't think Hillary and I would ever fight. Yeah, I would say, say that you and Hillary, for some reason, are more likely to probably. Fight. I think if, we're just if, a little more combative, just as people. Maybe it's possible. Yes. But how would you handle it? <laughs> I'd be holding my like big fucking like girly ass drink. I'd be like, guys, guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Popping out from the bamboo shoots that are in my drink. Come on, guys. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no? Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Oops, podcast, we're back. I'm Francis. This is Julio. Oh, yeah. Welcome aboard. What's popping? You're wearing a uh, commemorative USS Franklin hat i'm wearing a like your grandfather hat the, but like your grandfather who likely is no longer alive yeah you know what i mean like mm -hmm. the world war ii sort of like commemorative hat it's kind of cool I, I i'm really ab about it i kind of like it my new thing is to bring these back dude so tell us where you got that i got this at the f uh fdr home national historic site is that up in upstate new york yes what's in the hyde, hyde park, park. Yep. Uh, for my birthday, I decided I would do a, uh, I, so we had a rental car for this wedding this weekend, which I'm excited to tell you guys about this story too, about, uh, you know, the sort of booby trap wedding for Hill Dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's some good <laughs> material. Um, but rented a car, decided I would continue, uh, to keep on pace for my national park aspirations of going to all 423. That number will slightly increase as time goes on as well. So need to do, I'm trying to do like 15 plus a year. I'm at 11 right now. Wow. National park registered units, which is different than national parks. Get those units. But national parks fall underneath the umbrella. I've talked about this a million times. Anyway, drove up there by myself, had a great time. Uh, went to FDR's uh, childhood home and just home in general. It's cool. His wife's home, which is like down the street. You can actually hike between the two, which oh, wow. I chose not to do. It was just going to take a little too long. His wife, who was a related cousin. Yeah, f five cousin, five removed or whatever. Well, I don't think it was that much. That's what the guy said yesterday. But he might have said it in some way where you guys mean the same they thing. They weren't, they were blood related. I know, but but like five times removed still means you're blood related though. Okay. Like, does that mean fifth cousin? I've never really understood the removed thing. Either have I. And Hillary's tried to explain it to me, and I still don't get it. It would almost be like we would need an actual family tree. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen a real family tree? Like, yes, but not... It'd be kind of fun to, to draw one. Yeah, I, I just, I, like, wouldn't know how. Have you ever drawn a tree? I have. I haven't done that in a while. It's been a while. I was pretty good at it, I think. <laughs> Yeah. So, dude, I went on these, and then I went to the Vanderbilt Mansion as well. One thing that's annoying about these sort of like house centric sites is that in order to go inside, you need to take a tour, mm. and the tour just really drags, dude. Jesus, it yeah. could take ten minutes. It takes an hour. There's typically very old people on the tour, which is fine, but it just moves slowly, and there's always this like fifteen minute orientation outside of the thing where the guy just talks and to it's you. It's always hot. It's always sunny. Right. So, uh, sun. so it's annoying and the grounds are always really nice. So I'm always kind of like, I don't need to even go in, but this time I was like, dude, you're here. I've started to have FOMO about the times where I didn't go in. Uh, so I'm like, I'm just going to do it. And I did. And I actually learned some interesting stuff. You want to hear some good tidbits more than anything in the that world you may or may not already know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So even though it was like obvious that FDR couldn't walk at all, Everybody kind of played along with the idea that he could, including the media, which I find interesting. Like, yeah, that's right. The media is like, we'll let him have this one. You know what I mean? So what he'd do is he would build his own wheelchairs out of real chairs so that when he would take a photo seated, it would look like he was sitting and not that he was in a wheelchair. Oh, which is interesting. that is interesting. Another good one, when like foreign dignitaries or whatever would come over uh, to meet or whatever, the Secret Service guys on the property would make his shoes dirty and put to them make near it the seem door. As though he'd been walking. He'd been out walking in the morning. Wow. Which I was like, damn, that's crazy. I mean, that's a guy who was very insecure about his uh, lack of mobility, clearly. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it you must have been like, how do you get so much done? Uh, and b- b- while spending so much time being insecure about that, I mean, I understand why you would be insecure about that as a politician. You don't want to look weak, right? Um, another thing that they did during his administration, they stopped the kind of dust bowl in the Midwest that was ripping up all the prize soil by just planting a built like a hundred thousand trees or something. Wow. That was like a thing they did. Is that part of the new deal? I believe so. Yeah. So a lot of those initiatives, right. Were, were to sort of curb the horrible depression and it was all work that stemmed from the effort to, to try to turn the turn things country around. around. Totally. He's sort of, I mean, Lincoln is usually number one. Washington is off, often given to, but FDR is top three or four president yeah, ever. Yeah, hard to argue against that. Yeah. He's up there for sure. And it, I remember learning uh, that, of course, he was the only president to exceed the two terms. Yeah. Uh, and I remember thinking at the time when I heard that, wow, what a power-hungry tyrant. <laughs> and yet nobody in history has ever had any problem with it. And I guess my dad always said, oh, well, it was an extraordinary time. World War Two, yeah, depression, right. all of that. So everyone just said, "Nope, you're sticking around." I don't think term limits existed until after his presidency. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah, Ryan can check that. But I'm pr- I'm fairly certain the term limit thing began. After but it was that. highly suggested if there had been a precedent for over, you know, 150 years of presidents, right? That no one had ever done leaving it. after two terms. Totally. Okay. Um. By the way, if you're interested in this sort of thing, there. Our good friend Shane Gillis had Louis C.K. on his podcast, Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast, and all they did was talk about the presidents. Oh, it's, it's and fun, it's, it's it, they did four parts of it, and it's wow. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Louis, uh, he's like a historian. Grasp of history is like uh, it's unlike anything I've ever heard. Crazy, and he makes it funny, and it's it's awesome. So give that a listen. That's sick. I would definitely listen to that, yeah. um, dude. So what, one of the tour guides. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a thing about getting old. I don't know if there's like a physical thing to it or it's like you can't hear. So you don't think other people hear. But like our tour guide just kept farting, dude. Come on. Like ripping them. You're not serious. I'm dead like five times just ripping farts. What do you mean? And I'm picturing sort of uh, marble staircases so that they reverberate. So, okay. In the, in the, this Were was they a, reverberating? No, this is at the FDR home, which is not marbly. It's not. It's not? Is no, it wooden floors? Very kind of like. Yeah. Like, so you could step on a wooden floor, which would creak, and then let one go, which would make you think you were covering it up. I don't think he even, he literally just like stepped a couple steps to the side when we were outside and just started blasting, dude. And you, you could hear it. Very, very clearly. <laughs> dude, to the point, this is funny. I look at this, so this kid and his dad were next to me, and we hear it. It was like startling. It was like very, very loud. And I started laughing. I I started laughing out loud and I thought certainly this like other kid is going to bond with me over this. And he just like got uncomfortable and looked away. What a loser. He, didn't make eye he probably plays some kind of woodwind instrument. What a pussy. dude. Yeah. What a loser. If you can't laugh at a <laughs> fart joke when you're a kid, you're doomed. Dude. I know. I was like, bro, what's your problem? I bet um, you he plays instruments. So dude, I wish there was a way to make this shit less, uh, boring for people because it's so fun and cool and like beautiful and the mm. nature's beautiful they always take care of the grounds really well and then you just like end up in this boring ass tour bro yeah yeah um oh it's a good one so it was fun i had a fun birthday dude then hill dog took me to an incredible omakase dude oh, best one i've ever had where uh, it's called teru sushi teru t-r-u in uh west village ish area like on hudson street yeah uh like right before you kind of get towards the end of it on the north side of it you know i gotta tell you julia it was exceptional the city of new york might want to consider putting a limit on the amount of sushi restaurants (laughs) i know dude i know it it, because first of all you go on the um i don't i want to hear more about this but you go on the michelin guide of of all the top you know michelin starred and michelin plate gourmand all that whatever ranked restaurants in new york city and I, it's it felt like almost half of them were sushi restaurants i know it's insane and i understand that uh you know really artisanal and, and sushi is it's a craft that it it shows well like if you're totally, a really good totally. sh- the level of precision all of that 
you know, it, it almost lends itself to haute cuisine more totally. than any other cuisine, I would that say. And like French food, for some yeah. reason, are like always at the top of all the Michelin lists. Right, right. But even so, uh, you know, Pearl Harbor wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Dude. Speaking of FDR, I, I mean, <laughs> the wounds are healed, but the scars are still there. <laughs> and I just think, yeah, okay, great, fine, Japan, good, you know, glad you're Glad you're with us, but uh, we don't need to. We don't need to, you know, really stretch it too far. <laughs> Let's not stretch the bonds of that friendship too far. Let's not have a sushi restaurant on every block. Well, this is that, is, is that bad to say? Probably. I mean, I know you're not being serious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think he's gonna. I'm not like worried about it. But, no, no. Me neither. Um, but dude, this place was really good. It was really a standout, and I'll tell you why. The I had never heard. Of like the vast majority of the fish that we were eating. It was shit I'd never heard of. And to the point where like, I like to, whenever I go to like an omakase, I'll try to take pictures of it. Not that I'll ever look at them ever again. Mm -hmm. And I don't post them obviously, but it's fun. You know what I mean? It's a treat for me. Like, uh, so anyway, a lot of, they would show us the picture of the actual fish on an iPad and be like this. And like, sometimes they didn't, they'd be like, all right, we're going to put the picture of the fish and the name in your picture because we know that you'll never be able to remember this. Oh wow! And this is like a really dope fish. Cool. Uh, so anyway, dude, it was amazing. And I'm starting to feel like guilty. Hill Dog went too hard for my birthday, dude. I get that feeling too. And I didn't, I thought that I did a night, I thought that I was nice for her birthday. Uh, and you know, I, I did my whole little thing, but I don't know. I just can't compete. Dude. Girls are, women are better people than men. <laughs> they are certainly more generous. I, I completely agree with the sentiment. But dude, she, across the board, she put me under the underwater. I mean- she spent more money. She got more thoughtful, specific things that I need. And yeah. like, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't compete. Even the meal, I, I suspect that the meal that I took her for was less expensive than the meal that she took me for. Not that it matters, but like, I still feel like if we I know, were I know what you mean. keeping score, the, I lose. The, there's this, I have this fear where if I were to meet the standard that Sierra has set with her lavish birthday setups for me, then all of a sudden it becomes this arms race where <laughs> we're just, hunt. yeah, it's the space race to the moon of, of birthdays. <laughs> and if I meet that standard, then now that's where the bar is, uh -huh. you know, uh, inflation be damned, recession be damned, whatever. There's no, uh, outside force on the economy that would allow me to get away with, you know, stepping backwards in terms of the birthday. So, um, Again, this year did my best. I proposed. I <laughs> uh, got her the most expensive present I've ever gotten her. So I got, I dodged a bullet in a way, mm -hmm. right? But um, next year, I'm back on the hook. Are you back in there? Yeah. Um. So let me tell you what she got me. So yes, yes, yes. Obviously, took me to this really nice dinner. Got me a cake. Lovely. What kind of cake? Uh, Momofuku. Oh yeah. The, the, uh, the milk bar cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I do really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but dude, I'm like, I'm caked out, dude. You're a little caked out. I gotta throw the rest of that out. Uh, most likely dude come over bro it's, it's okay. yours if you, you can freeze them i think too ah, dude. we did that once by the way have i told you this no what happened I <laughs> one time i i had this incredible carrot cake for my birthday and we only ate half of it as a party it was a big cur cur uh, carrot cake and then we said okay well let's freeze it we froze it and it sat in our freezer like a dead body for <laughs> six months to a year and I, it took up so much space. And every time I opened the freezer to get ice or whatever, I would see this half carrot cake. Like, my God, <laughs> what are we saving that for? Right. What's the day in our lives faster? where we say, well, we've got a carrot cake, a frozen carrot cake, right? So how do you even defrost it? Do you, just, you bring it out and bring it to room temperature. Do you, is, you don't move it to the fridge? You Could may you do. do you may do. Okay. I can't remember. You do that with meat. You put it in so the it comes down a little slower. Yes, but but with the carrot cake, we actually, uh -huh. if you can believe this, we actually did defrost it someday. Wow! Was I don't even remember occasion? why. I don't remember what it was, but it was a long time later. And when we did that, we each had one slice, and then we threw the rest <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> and it was such an unnecessary bullshit. I don't even know. You know, if you're gonna defro freeze a cake, I think you've got to. Cut it up into individual pieces and then freeze those, and then you can take them out one at a time. That's interesting. Might be the play. Our freezer is a little temperamental. Mm. Like occasionally, it'll just like stop being frozen, mm -hmm. 
every four or five months. <laughs> so it's just really a risk to like put oh, anything no. important in there. But again, dude, if the cake melted or whatever, I'd just be like, whatever, dude. Yeah, right. Throw that shit out. Cakes are big. All right, um, sorry, okay. keep going. No, I keep no, sorry. interrupting you. No, no, sorry, sorry. Dude, this is your day. It's the nature of the pod. It is mm. not. It is not my day. Um, it was your day, your birthday. Um, it 34. was thirty-four. It's thirty-six. Oh my God, I'm way off. I'm thirty-six. Years <laughs> sorry old, about that. You are youthful. You're youthful in your appearance, in your spirit. In no way would I have thought you're a thirty-six-year-old. Oh, thanks for doing it. I'm not that worried about appearing to be one. That doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, I do appreciate that. That's very nice. Uh, but yeah, I kind of like like the idea of getting older a little bit. You do? Kind of, yeah. Hmm. I just know that between now and the time where I continue to achieve older and older ages, I hope to live a lot of ex- life. And your brain is your best quality, and like my current brain is superior to every other form of my brain that's ever existed. Every of every year of yeah. your brain, yeah, you know, that's nice. Until it starts to deteriorate, I know. At which point, just put a bullet in my fucking head, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I I say that too. Except I do. My grandmother, um, my only remaining well no i have a i have a step grandmother but she's very much a grandmother uh, but my my dad's mom is the only remaining blood grandparent and she's 92 nice and she is really losing her memory really yeah and it's sad except that she's very happy right i don't think she's scared of the sort of unfamiliarity around her mm-hmm. uh she's a little embarrassed by it and will apologize for it. Ah, sorry, your name, uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. But she's aware of her brain slipping. And then her day, my guess, has a simplicity to it. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But there is, a, there is a, I think there's a way to have your mind go where in a way it just sort of, it creates a little bit more of a peace around softens you. Softens the blow a I little. I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's the thing I think about where it's like, if I was just completely with it and I'm like, I am dying right now, mm-hmm. that's like fucking nuts. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie The Notebook? Yeah. So you know how um, she writes the diary? Yeah. And he reads it to her? Yes. And at the end it says, she read this it. to me and you'll I'll come back to you? Yeah. That, by the way, just everybody's seen The Notebook, so I'm sure, but that's like- yeah. One of the yeah, it's a good twist. Massive spoiler, but I can I can't help but think, my God, to have to read this much to someone just to remind them that we're married every day. Forget it. I'd find a new woman. <laughs> but it's, the whole point of it is that it's very romantic. I guess it is a very nice story. Such idea. a commitment. Oh my. <laughs> god it's like reading a book on tape every day Dude. that movie's like three hours long <laughs> you're telling me that every day i'd be starting a total stranger right it takes him the entire day every yeah time. and by the end they're holding hands <laughs> then she slips out of it and flips out and he's weeping and it's like ugh, that I, I, that would happen once and i'd be like this isn't worth it that seems she's not even gonna taxing. remember that i'm off with another woman because she doesn't remember who i am true so long, farewell, I am off to bang another. <laughs> that sort of thing. Right, right. Did and then they them? die holding hands. Did it, they do? Yeah, they fall asleep. They're dead. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that part. In the, in the bed, they die. Is, is that true? Pretty sure they die. <laughs> I don't think they do. I dude. think they die. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I that the cycle begins die. again. No. You hope they die. I, I think they die. The they two do? of them. I think they die at the same time. It's ridiculous. Yep, Ryan's giving me the nod. They do die. Dead elders. He at seemed, the end of Notebook. That, that's a sort of a twist. Yeah, you know why he died? Because he, he, like he, he fucking good. wore himself out reading that goddamn <laughs> diary to her. It's the fucking end of his energy. His heart gave out. My God. Dude, oh Nobody my should God. have to read that much every day out loud. Think of how much water you'd have to have. You'd have to have a Jesus lot. Christ. Even people who read books on tape, Obama, those kinds of people, they do it over the course of multiple days. <laughs> You know, they're not doing it every day. Reading the same book every day. That's some kind of Dionysian shit. <laughs> wow. You know Dionysus? Isn't that a god? Conde- it's, it's Sisyphus. It's like uh, those the, the people who are condemned to do the same thing over and over. Mm. Tantalus. Maybe it's Tantalus. Tantalus was in the water. The water was at his feet. The grapes at his head. He had reached for the grapes. The what's, vines which, would what's recede. What's this from? This is from like it's a Greek, Greek mythology. Yeah. 
Sisyphus rolling the rock up the hill. He'd get it to the top. It would tumble back Do down. He'd have to again. start it over again. Who was the first one I said? Dionysus. Not Dionysus. Dionysus was the god of, of food and wine, I think. So he actually had it pretty good. Tantalus and Sisyphus. Those two. Anyway, keep going. Sorry. Uh, dude, that just reminded me. I went to like a to a Nazi like prison camp oh. like in, uh, when I was in Poland. And like kind of like a Do less... you remember which one it was? It wasn't one of the famous ones. It was one of the, it was near like Poznan. It mm. was kind of like, there was nobody there. Oh. Uh, and there was this really fucked up thing where there was these really steep stairs, like really, really steep. And what they would do is they would make you like walk to the top of it with bricks in your back, in your backpack. And then once you got to the top, they would kick you down and make you do it again until you died. I was like, this is super fucked up. Dude. Jesus Christ. I know. <laughs> super creepy. You know, I don't think <laughs> the, uh, concentration camps are something I will ever visit. Um, it's too heavy. It's I'm sorry. Heavy. Um, I feel like they are the site of such evil that I would I would have a bad reaction. I'd feel like it was seeping into me. You want to talk about haunted places? To call it a bummer is an understatement, but like there is some value to the um sort of like never again situation yes yes which makes those kind of things important so that people don't start acting like it never happened right now that the last survivors are sort of on their way out it's kind of important and it may be not going to fucking concentration camp but at least like making sure kids go to the museums and like genocide you know what i mean like should not be happening so these museums uh and not to be like act like i know anything about this but when i was in africa We'd be like hanging out, having all this fun, and the, everybody, in, like, would be like, "You need to go to the to the genocide museum." Wow! Even like the coolest, cool, cynical comic, yeah, would be like, "No, but for real, you need to go." And you went. Yeah, we went. It was like the most fucked up, but yeah. like powerful thing. Ugh. Uh, whatever. No, that was a pretty. No, dark I know. Turn. No, no, no. It's fine. I, I look. I for me, this may sound very. If if people have strong opinions, I this is the kind of thing where I'd. We're going to get a bunch of DMs from people being like, I heard what you said, and I actually went myself, and here's why I would recommend doing and it. I'd be, I'd be and I'd be and I'd be open minded those. to being to being told that. I'd love to see what people have to yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. It's always interesting. But for me, um, I've read Night by Ellie Wiesel, and I've read some of the other Holocaust literature. He was a professor where I went to school. Was he? Yeah, he like did a guest. Pro he would like. Do teach a class every semester or something yeah i went to a couple of the lectures pretty cool the scenes from those books have never left my brain mm -hmm. and i feel like uh that might be enough for me mm -hmm. to never forget does that make sense totally i don't know that i need the the sort of boots on the ground tour totally. of the gas chambers and the yeah. killing field whatever it is yeah yeah Totally. Uh, so anyway, well, hold on. I want. I have more to add. To please, this please, 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 please. <laughs> so yeah. uh, there's a. It's on PBS. It's on. It's a frontline episode that they've kept up. Uh, they recovered sort of like the first commissioned Holocaust uh, video that they made because they're like, oh, we need to make sure that people know about this because it was pretty fucked up. So they actually hired Alfred Hitchcock to oh, like wow. arrange it, and they basically show the movie. Mm -hmm. um and it's crazy and and it's also kind of crazy the way the differing styles with which they did it so like apparently the russian when the russians found some of the camps the russians and like the western forces found them kind of at the same time but different camps yeah and the russians were like told the prisoners to put their like prison outfits back on to make like more compelling docu footage oh, wow. while the west did not do that anyway it all kind of covers i need to right is there a way you could look this up frontline like original hot if you have the stomach for it and this interests you, I really this was really fascinating, uh, and obviously important subject material. Yeah, um, it should not be taken lightly, obviously, but I think it's very interesting. I the in in Band of Brothers, there's the amazing scene where the American, you know, GIs discover one of the camps in the woods, and mm -hmm. the the Nazis have left, but the prisoners start walking out to see the americans and all of them in the show are gaunt and rail thin and i i couldn't help but wonder did they hire actors who then like 
a hundred actors who basically starved themselves who did like just the to be extras right, right. on this show right. or did they somehow miraculously cast a lot of people who were, were really that skinny. thin it's I, interesting i i it was it's such an amazing scene and i i can't imagine how you could convince so many That's people to undergo such a body transformation so unhealthy uh for such a short part in a in a yeah no, show. Totally. that's really really interesting um yeah. to to clarify for anybody who doesn't know like extra work you don't really make that much money uh it's it, by the way right it's a frontline episode if that makes the search easier oh you found it or oh okay i just heard you typing away over there i wasn't sure if you were having trouble um but extras don't make a lot of money like no. it's not it's not a job where they're like all right we're hiring you to be an extra uh, but now you need to lose 80 pounds. Like it would never be, you make like a hundred dollars yeah. or $200 for the day for the day. Um, so maybe they got paid as like special. I wonder. Yeah. Or, yeah. Ryan, what do you got? So Alfred Hitchcock took the footage and the name of the documentary is called German concentration camps, factual survey. That's the title of it. It was wow, officially released in 2014. <laughs> That's the PBS one. Yeah. Frontline? It was officially released in 2014. It's a frontline episode, right? I believe so. Yeah, okay. I oh. didn't even realize it was called that. It was crazy. But yeah, it's uh, pretty fucked up. Hmm. Anyway, real quick. So are, do, are we done with Holocaust? We should move off okay, the Holocaust, I agree. I agree. yeah. Um, really quickly, I want to shout out fucking Alamo Rental Car, Astor Place. Wow. Dude, I got to tell you, all I rent a lot of cars. Yeah. And I have a pretty strong sort of like dialogue about this because I do kind of need a car. And like at the end of the day, I just can't justify like starting a lease or buying one here. Because it's just such a pain in the fucking ass. And even if I'm overpaying for rentals, it still nets out like significantly less than what having my own car would. For me. Yes, of course. You know what I mean? And I get the convenience factor. Hill Dog disagrees with the sentiment. She wants to get a car. I know you guys have a car. It's just my thing. I'm dying. This is the hill I'm dying on at this point. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I rent cars a lot. Dude, how good they are at this place. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Like renting a car to me has always been the most lifeless, just shitty process that just absolutely sucks. And bro, at this place, the girl Amanda who works there, you walk in and she remembered everything that I was doing that weekend. How was your how was the wedding? Oh my god. How was your birthday? I was like, oh what? God. I was like, dude, I will forever rent cars from you. And if yeah. if I get a better price somewhere else, I'll maybe we can do like a price match thing. But I just wanted to <laughs> shout them out, dude. I just was so gassed up about that. Nice. How no dope it was. Intended. Yeah, Jesus. Um, um there's on, on kayak. <laughs> I use kayak a lot for travel booking. Same. No free ads, but whatever. And you can do car rentals on there too. And they, they rank, they give a rating to the car rental agency. Of the specific branch of that of that branch. Oh wow! I didn't. So in that. LA, you I know, use kayak too. Yeah, in LA, you've got you know Dollar and Thrifty mm-hmm. and Alamo and Budget and Hertz and all that. And I can't Enterprise. I can't remember exactly which one is so much higher than the others. It's I think it's the one Hertz with, or Enterprise usually. It's probably Enterprise. Those are like the best ones. Yeah, and it's 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 a little more expensive, but you're talking about. Okay, I think it's like um, you're going to have to take a shuttle from the airport to the car rental place. And little things like Enterprise is the first stop. Oh, that's nice. As opposed to the fourth. That's nice. You walk in and they have express. You can do an express. Has it too. It's fucking Check out before. Yeah. And you walk in and they legit hand you keys and say, your car's over there. Dude, when I rented one in Florida, I didn't even talk to anybody. I just walked to the car from That's Hertz. So and again, Hertz ridiculous. is more expensive too, but dude, it was so worth it. Yeah, it is it is worth it. Yeah. And then and then when you're on a when you're on a two or three day we uh trip in a foreign city, especially if it's work, having your own rental car, you can live out of it. There's so much comfort <laughs> that comes in having your it's own car. Really nice. In LA, every time I go to LA, I'm 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 running a car automatically. Yeah. Because I've s i have to get so far yeah i have to get around all these different places and i can leave a bag in the car i can leave uh, you know the, all that stuff mm-hmm. as opposed to taking ubers which is a nightmare so it got to a point with me where when uber pool was still a thing like i would go to la and uber pool everywhere and it was just so cheap that i was like okay granted it requires like an extra 10 or 15 minutes just in case the uber isn't close which a lot of the time it isn't which it still it backs you up a little bit but the money was nice the last time I was there, I didn't rent a car and it was a massive mistake. 
as we've talked about, Uber prices are way higher in, in, in there as well, uh, unsurprisingly. And, mm-hmm. dude, like, we'd call an Uber and it would be 40 minutes away. That's so dumb. And I was like, this sucks. Yeah, fuck Uber, dude. This sucks. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, man. All right. We, we got to go back to your birthday. Okay. Um, man, I had, I had something else. Go back. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, oh, I want to remind me to tell you about my dad. Did I talk, talk to you guys about my dad's trip? I know I talked about them being on a trip. And you Did talked I talk about, about how they ran into the, the yeah, other Yeah, but I didn't talk about how badly he fucked up the pro. My dad is the baby got to be one of the worst travelers of all time. The poor guy. I'll, I want to talk about my birthday, but then we'll, I want to well, Really quick, him. you posted oh, that was funny, a right? video of him <laughs> on vacation, and you weren't with him. Did you see the, what it, he posted just before? just in the boat. Okay, so he posted. Dude, <laughs> this is so. Awesome. No, no, but this is what, this is how that came to be. So my dad, when we were in Costa Rica, he like started feeling himself because his content was doing so well on my page. Yeah. So uh, my same thing happens to my dad, dude. Dude, it's great. So it was funny. Have I told you my my dad thinks that because I am now a semi successful comedian, he must have that in him too. That's funny. My dad definitely thinks and that. And it's also. only because he never put his hat in the ring that he, that he wasn't did. discovered. Otherwise, dude, totally. And it, because clearly the DNA comes from him. My dad definitely feels that. And way so too. since my success in comedy, whatever success I've had, is an affirmation of his humor uh-huh. to him. Uh-huh. And then he is now flexing those comedic muscles mm-hmm. with reckless abandon. <laughs> uh, at any turn. I mean, it is it is a full-blown comedy show because he's not actually getting up on stage. Right. So any waiter, any flight attendant, oh, you're God. they're at the mercy of his ugh, terrible act. Dude, my dad, too, you know when he's doing comedy mode because he starts like swearing a little more. And then it's just... He goes, yeah, we're just, he goes, talking shit, man, talking shit. <laughs> and it's just him. So he's like running bits by me. And then I, if I'm, if I don't laugh, which a lot of the times I don't, I'm not just going to fake laugh for the guy the whole time. Yeah. He'll be like, he kind of like gets a little taken aback that I'm not laughing. I'm like, listen, pal, you wanted to be in the big leagues. This is yeah. part of it. Yeah. You don't get to decide Fair. when people think it's funny. That's like how this fucking works, dude. And part of the problem is <laughs> Sierra for us is, is such a generous laugher that she does laugh at him which which just charges his engine Bless and her then heart. he starts shooting from the hip left and right <laughs> oh, and it's like dad you got to remember not all not all audiences are the same she may be very uh she may be that loosey goosey proper drunk level audience on a saturday <laughs> night but the rest of us are that weak wednesday after work tired crowd yeah we're the church group that you know came on a, on a whim and yeah. showed up to the comedy club and didn't expect you to be doing race jokes. Yep, exactly. So, um, right. But anyway, so when I, so I've, I've decided at this point in the episode, I'm going to save the wedding ex-girlfriend yeah. minefield story for the, fu- for the following episode. Mm. Keep you guys on the hook for the next one. Good. Um, okay, so my dad um, t- sends me this text. He goes, I know you hate it when I suggest content, but this video is ridiculously funny. I'm singing that I'm taking a boat. Then I do a selfie. You should load it on your social media for my fans. <laughs> my fans. Then I sent. Then he sent me the video, and I was like, "Okay, this is actually good. Like, uh-huh. it's here. I'll show you. It's, it's him." Yeah. He goes, here, "You'll hear him here." He goes, "I'm taking a boat." And then he just he kind of he's not really smiling. He just kind of like shows himself. He's also wearing a Hurley hat, and I was like, "This is going to do well." And dude, I probably got like 600 DMs about this specifically. <laughs> I'm taking a boat. Like, where is he? That looks like Positano. That is where they were. Yeah? Yeah. That's nice. Like, good call. That's where my parents went on their honeymoon. Oh, wow. And I've still never been to this day. How romantic. But I'd like to go. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I've ever specifically been there, but that area is very nice. By the way, speaking of traveling, mm-hmm. since I know you love. I sure do. <laughs> all of our conversations, Sierra and I, about 
having children are now being determined based on what trips we feel like we got to do before, the before we start trying. That's interesting. And uh, Japan is at the top of the list mm. because... Bro, that could be the best place to take your kids. As you've seen, from you can send them off on their first errand. Uh, <laughs> at two years old. Sorry, someone tells continue. me my kids wouldn't do that well carrying a bucket <laughs> of fish up a hill. <laughs> You watched? Uh, no, you uh, told me, okay. and that's all I'm thinking about. So funny. Yeah. Um, but Japan, you know, it's going to be a lot of eating and a lot of drinking. If she's pregnant. Totally. That's, that's true. That's not happening. True. Especially sushi. You're not supposed to eat sushi when you're pregnant. Oh, right. You know? Makes sense. So that'll probably be first, and then Patagonia is, is number two. Oh, man. So cool. I want to get those two trips in before we start trying. Sick, dude. Dude, I'd be down to make... If, we should do a fucking couples trip to Japan, dude. Just throwing it out there. Oh, that would be fun. If you wanted, I'm not trying to fucking tag no, no, on that your... that would be cool. That would, would be cool. I would find that to be very fun. You know, I'm curious about what is the right length for a couples trip? It's a very good question. Probably shorter rather than longer. Yeah, I don't know if you... You don't necessarily want two weeks. Unless you have a very firm, established understanding... Hey guys, we'll overlap. We're gonna go. We're gonna go do this for a day or yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. You guys do that. Like we, we're gonna go do this. You guys want to do this? Not everything has to be together. The perfect scenario, most likely, just to make sure every because you know, like we're not gonna want to do the same stuff, and our styles might collide over time. But like for a few days, we can definitely certainly like handle it very, very easily. The move seems to be to overlap for a period of time during the trip, and then. Like, start the trip alone, overlap, and the trip alone. That's not a bad idea. That sounds like a good... I think we would do well with you guys, though. You know, because we're such good friends, and they're such good friends. Agreed. And everyone gets along. Um, Two weeks is just a long... It's just a long fucking trip. Yeah. Think about go going to dinner every night together. Exactly. My, What's your biggest fear? What's your fear? Of our, us going on a trip together? Yeah. There's know. two fears. Us, like, getting in a huge fight? That's it. But there's two ways that that could happen, right? There's a lot of ways that that could happen. What's that supposed to mean? We don't fight. We don't fight. And if no. we did, we'd solve it immediately. Mm -hmm. the, the fights that would be problematic would be, or that would suck, right? Would be if either we started fighting in front of you, as we've talked about, or you started oh, fighting in I front of even, us. That wouldn't bother me. No, but like just at that dinner, it's not that fun. Agreed. Right? Agreed. But if there is a cross party fight oh that's crazy <laughs> like that you and hillary fight really fighting. bad that's bad now i would i would not do that if if she and i started raising tension for whatever reason i would instantly back down okay and sierra and you would never fight I don't think so. And I don't, by the way, I don't think Hillary and I would ever fight. Yeah, I would say, say that you and Hillary, for some reason, are more likely to Probably. fight. Probably. I think if, we're just if, a little more combative, just as people. Maybe. It's possible. Yes. We're, we are, <laughs> yeah. This is funny. Yeah. But how would you handle it? You know, would you, would you, would you reach to me or to her and be like, hey, hey, we've got, you know, our drinks are coming. I would probably. Who are you reaching dude, to first? I'd be holding my like big fucking like girly ass drink. I'd be like, guys, guys, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Popping out from the bamboo shoots that are in my drink. Come on, guys. Uh, <laughs> what if you and Sierra both got up to go to the bathroom at the same time to be like, just we're. Oh, uh, we'll give you guys a second. And we like continue just yelling at each other at some table or sushi counter in Tokyo. So there's a world where that like would be okay. And honestly, it could end up just being good for, if there's a chance that that would be absolutely terrible. But when you get to a level with people where you're doing that, that can a lot of time mean that you're just like really close, mm. which can ultimately be a net positive. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, think about your closest friends who like you'll fight with them or like the idea of like Sierra fighting with them isn't as bad as other people. Yeah. But the problem is that Hillary and I have never fought. Of course. Yeah. So we don't know what sort of weapons the other person will use or is willing to use. Like, let's say that we were arguing about a topic, right? Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, uh, something contentious, women's reproductive rights. I don't even know why. See, that's the thing. I think, I think that like, even though you joke about a lot of this shit, 
I think that like you guys probably have the same stance. I'm certain we do. These but, are really cool pants, by the way, dude. Oh, you like these? I was thinking that. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. These are um, <laughs> some company called Corridor. Very sick. Which, by the way, I went into their store, which is in Fort their Green. Their store door? In yeah, the yeah. Uh, about a year or two ago, and the guy in there, I might have told you about this. He was with a couple of his buddies, and it was like the owner of the store, the guy who started the fashion mm -hmm. line. And was just talking to me in a way that was like, I was almost like I wanted him to think I was cool. So I bought a bunch of his clothes. Oh, funny. He's like, he, I'd put something on in the dressing room and he's, he'd be like, that looks fucking sick. <laughs> it's his own clothes. Right, right, right. He, oh, like, he it's made so clever. It. And, and they, yeah, they would fucking... swear so casually. Yeah. And I'd be like, all right, I got to get it. You'd be like, that is so fucking, uh, sick. fucking you sick. You are so fucking sick. I spent like $600. I... <laughs> I don't even know what I bought like five or six things and I brought them home and instantly I was like, God, I don't I don't know if I like any of this. It was a good pants. It just looked good in his eyes, and I was seeing the clothing on me through his eyes. Right? But somehow in the space of time since I bought all these clothes, that company has become super cool oh, that's and awesome. super popular. And they have opened up stores in a bunch of places. It's still like inside. Yeah, yeah. You know? But I see I see a lot of their stuff everywhere. It's a very hot brand. And it's almost like the kind of thing where I could probably sell some of these clothes on like a use like the yeah, real real or whatever. But I'm wearing them now more because the brand has come into its moment. Love it. And I can't tell everyone I bought this stuff before it was cool. You can. Well, they wouldn't believe me. I know, but this is. But says. this is. But you actually. Did, why would you lie about that, dude? You, you, you have been the biggest sort of outspoken force to say that you catch on to every trend late. This is a big moment for you. I guess, but the, the <laughs> here's how unoriginal I am. I didn't like the clothing until it became popular. <laughs> I owned it, and I didn't like it. And then all of a sudden, it had its moment, and I started wearing That's it again. Good. That's I really was like, good. thank God I didn't throw this shit out. That's good stuff. Take it to Goodwill, thought about it. <laughs> like, I'm never wearing this stuff. I, I bought it to appease the seller. All right. That's very good. All right. We were talking about Hill Dog and you fighting. Hillary and I are fighting about reproductive women's reproductive. You're fighting about rights. something. Well, you are, let's move it off. I that. don't even like that because not it's not a too political topic. We're fighting about. I have no idea. So what? Like maybe one of you just like see. I think yeah. Okay, whatever. Sorry. What maybe we're just maybe I I start talking shit about somebody she likes, and I don't know that she likes that person, and she's like actually uh she's a really nice person. And I, I'm like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I continue to, to double down. It's, it's hard to anticipate hard to what this, this fight would have been about. It wouldn't happen. But it could be about anything. You never know. If you're like a couple on, on trips, there's usually a fight. Yeah. She's from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Let's say that I'm just shitting on Chicago. You're saying that like people from the Midwest are like lesser people. They're not something. smart. I don't know. You were Whatever. just being, yeah, I'm being yeah. an you're asshole. You're being a dick. <laughs> Just being an asshole. I've had seven sakis. I'm, you know, I'm a bunch of lychee martinis. I'm feeling the sauce. I'm, I'm like, wow. I'm surprised we got Hillary from here. She's from the Midwest. They don't like to leave their okay. their ridiculously simple state um, from whence they come. And she's like, actually, I take offense at that. And whatever. And it starts escalating, right? Okay. She was okay. Yeah. Um. So where does it go from here? Like you know why we, we we get oh this is what i was gonna say we don't know what the other person is gonna bring in terms of weapons right mm -hmm. and so maybe i'm like i think i'm joshing and playfully like poking and sparring with her but then all of a sudden she says something like Fucked up. really personal and that's where and then all of a sudden i'm like whoa 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 and she's like, well, why, you know, we've been going back and forth and that's where you draw the line. That seems arbitrary. And it's this insult that I've chosen is too far. She doesn't think it is because I was the one leading the charge. Mm -hmm. Right. And we that's that's where the uncertainty of a couple fight having where the we can't fight. She and I like siblings or friends. Mm -hmm. because we've never fought right so we don't know where the other person is willing to go nor do we know where the what the other person's appetite 
or or threshold for fighting is. So this is my thought. I think that both of your appetite for that fight specifically is very low. But my fear is <laughs> when all of a sudden we just like started into getting on each other's nerves or something, and like you guys go back to your hotel room and you're like, I want to, I want to leave. Like I don't want to stay on this trip Oof. with them. And then you like make an excuse that like I can tell is a lie. That's such a martyr move. <laughs> such a petulant martyr move. Whatever it ends up being, like I, that feels like a much more realistic outcome than like an actual fight. I'm not that guy though. I'm not the pack my bags guy you you may not be the pack your bags guy but you could be the make it seem like everything's fine guy when it's not guy which is stressful i too am that guy do you still show it though maybe not do you still you well, it you, depends what's wrong if i'm mad about something maybe it would be harder for me to hide it but like if she, what if like she was hillary was so annoyed at you or something and that just is like a bummer. Like I wouldn't want that to happen. No, of course. Or any way around. Or I'm I offended Sierra and yeah. I didn't mean to. And then I actually would respond really well to you being like, listen, dude, you <laughs> I know you may have. and I'd be like, Oh my god, I did not mean that. And you're like, I know you didn't, but like maybe if you could apologize, she would really appreciate it. That feels like honestly realistic to me. Like yes. that could happen somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. But what if you just didn't agree? What if you didn't think you had done anything wrong? Or what if you were both offended? Okay, so... And you said, I expect an apology from her. So... If all of a sudden... I would never... That would never happen. I would never... I would let it go. I would give it to her. But if I offended her, I would accept the fact that I have offended her, whether or not I thought I was right or wrong. The fact that she took it offensively means to me that I have offended a person who's not easily offendable. She's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, she's chill. Yeah. She gets it. She's very resilient. I then, no matter what I think, I'm like, I used poor judgment. Whether, whether or not I was right or wrong, I used poor judgment there and I offended a person who I care about. Therefore, I will apologize and mean it and this will be over. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think, you're, I think your self-assessment there is correct. You're not a hard, you're not an unmovable object. Yeah, usually. You, you are um, open-minded to your own faults, and you're not so stoic as to die on a hill and, as I said, pack your bags, martyr yourself. Yeah. Or or we're, we're going to stay in another hotel, you know. Yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. a little dude, space. Yeah, no, yeah. It's fine. We just need to cool off. We'll see you guys at the <laughs> temple tomorrow. <laughs> Meet, we'll meet at the temple. We'll take a picture. Everything's going to be yeah. fine for right now. Everyone go back to their separate quarters. That's uh, so funny, yeah. dude. Oh um, boy, Kojai is jumping away from all the... We, we brought Koji Man in today, and now he's... He's now been he's, really good. He hasn't even be, he has been breathing been loud. All right, I'm going to let him out. Let him out. Hold on. Okay, okay dude. So back to... I want to talk about my, my birthday situation. So yeah. I got Hillary a bunch of stuff, but like none of it was that great, honestly. Like some of it she's ended up not even using. Like kind of the, some of the prized items of the gift were sort of a bust. Mm, um, that's a bad feeling. Of course, it's the thought that counts. And I, I'm sure I got her some stuff that was valuable and good. I can't really remember everything that I got her. Um, Let me ask you a quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you feel worse about prized gifts that are busts that you give or that you receive? Give, for sure. I don't give a fuck about getting gifts. No, but listen to me. Okay. Hillary gets you a prized gift. It's a bust. Uh -huh. You don't like it. You don't wear it. It just sits in your closet as a reminder of her lack of uh, understanding of what you want. Does that make you feel bad? Sometimes. It has in the or, past. I've had girlfriends that have like just completely miss the mark so much that it's like, do you even know who I am? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but Hills is just such a thoughtful person. Like she would never be that bad at giving a gift. I got a gift for someone once I was in China and they have a, did I tell you this? No. I, they had a, uh, there's a pearl market. Pearls are a big thing over there in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And I'd been told to go to the pearl market. It's a great place to pick up a gift for, your mom, your sister, your girlfriend, whatever. And I went to the Pearl Market. I had a recommendation of a seller that I should see and tell them, hey, I'm friends with this guy. They'll get you a good deal. And I was, you know, you go back and forth between freshwater pearls and saltwater pearls and the level of 
perfection and I got the girl I was seeing at the time a really nice pearl necklace from the pearl market in Shanghai. It's like a thing. Okay. And I brought it back for her and she just she didn't even try to be happy about it. I think she said something like I could I this is the kind of thing like a Harvard girl would wear. Which somehow was oh, like the most she took it as like a preppy thing, but she's like, like, this is from China. Lady. Yeah, it was supposed to be a kind of a cultural yeah. gift. And I, I, I would have thought any woman could potentially find some occasion to wear a, a pearl necklace, uh, especially if there was some kind of cool backstory to it. It's not like I bought it at, at the main mall. And she took it as you were trying to make her look like... I don't even know. Catherine, who's fifth generation. Yeah. My grandfather started this club. Right, exactly. Situation, yeah. I think, it, yeah, I think it was sort of a... I, but but also just that she would never wear something like this. Not that I was imprinting upon her how I wanted her to dress. It was a miscommunication. I, I just didn't... I didn't know that pearl necklaces carried such a stigma. It seemed right. like a pretty neutral gift. That's not your fault. That was a miscommunication. You missed the. You didn't take the temperature. But properly. it never sat well with me that she had such a negative. Oh, reaction. interesting. Yeah, agreed. That's because not nice. I have You're always endeavored to lie about liking things if someone got them for me. Um. Yeah. Same. And I. And listen, it's okay. You don't. You don't want to take away when somebody really hits a home run with a gift. Yeah. But it's okay to like have a baseline of po very positive. Totally. And, and I'll even wear things or I will make a point to obligingly wear something that I do not like if it was a gift simply to give the giver pleasure, mm -hmm. make mm -hmm. them feel validated in their choice. It's nice, dude. I remember one time I got one of my girlfriends uh, a, a couple pieces of jewelry and it was during a time where I had no money at all and I literally opened a credit card I and I think the limit was fifteen hundred dollars. I spent all fifteen hundred dollars. Maybe it was eight hundred. I spent the entire limit of That's the credit a big card. Gift. And she literally didn't even acknowledge the gift at all. She was like, Oh, thanks. And her sister witnessed this and was like, These are really nice. Like you should be more grateful. Oh God. Well, do you like, know oh. what the gift was? You don't want to say? It was some jewelry thing. It wasn't like it, I tried to make it sentimental. Like I tried to make it something that had her favorite number in it, which I realized when I had asked her what her favorite number is, she just like made something up basically. Like uh, the number wasn't actually important to her. And it was actually okay, it was jewelry made out of the original like uh, numbers on the doors of her apartment building that was previously kind of like a big hotel, big like fancy hotel, oh. famous hotel. And they repurposed them into jewelry. It was like this cool thing. And plus something else. Like it was, I was really thoughtful and then it just completely, yeah. and it was, and then I was just in debt and unappreciated. Wow, dude. that's tough, I man. Beat. Well, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to bring this up to you really quick. Uh, but first, Chris, did you have a thought there? I just have a funny pearl story because I like I wear pearls every day and there was this one time I was at the bar and there was this older lady, uh, I'd say a cougar. She was just hanging around the bar and her <laughs> husband was hanging around in the back and she was just like flirting with everyone. She's like, oh, those pearls, uh, you're like a, a grandmother, but cooler. I was like, God. damn, bro. Oh, Tough thanks. Crap. That's not a very nice thing <laughs> to say. <laughs> You should have been like, you wouldn't get it, you fucking yeah, old bag. you pull it off. The pearls look good on you. I should have yeah. given you that fucking necklace. <laughs> yeah, you should have. <laughs> you would have been really appreciative. So, you know, it is what it is. I, but but as far as, cre now we're talking about credit, right? Getting, in, you know, getting credit. I, I, I think this relates to what you just said. Over the weekend, I was in Boston, did some shows at Laugh Boston. Super fun time. Thanks for everyone who came out, a lot of pod listeners, love you all. And I, uh, at the, the staff was amazing. The staff at Laugh Boston is probably the best I've ever seen at any comedy wow. club, Wow! if I'm honest. They will pounce on someone oh, in nice. the audience taking even a photo. Oh, wow. My mom, my parents came. My, my parents came to see me, and it was the first time they've seen me do stand-up in probably like three or four years. Oh, wow, fun. Since the Wilbur, I think. Oh, wow. Maybe they came after that in Maine. But they saw me and they were so excited because it was I'm better now than I was. Mm -hmm. And they used to get really nervous and they were like, this is the first time we've seen you where we weren't nervous. Oh, nice. Um, so, uh, but my mom went to take a photo of me and one of the staff 
That's jumped hard. on her and was like, you can't take pictures. What are you doing? Oh she my was God. like, oh, it's my son. Is it okay? And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the weekend, uh, you know, I'd sold pretty well. I'd made some good money. And so I was really excited. And I wanted to tip the staff out. Uh, and, you know, you, when you're at a comedy club in your green room, typically one member of the wait staff will come into the green room and just ask if you want any food or a drink or whatever. And, and I'll always tip that person. But the whole staff had done so well that I wanted to give the staff uh, a, a, a sort of a, big, a bigger tip to share. That's nice. And I had a hundred dollar bill in my wallet and I had already walked out, but I was like, you know what? They fucking deserve it. And I walked back in and they were kind of, the club had, was shutting down. They'd cleaned up. It was late. And I, I handed, I said, this is for you guys. Is there any chance you can sort of split that uh, among the whatever, four or five members of the staff that are here? And she was like, oh, okay. And I was like, okay. That was weird. Thank you. Bye. And I walked out. It was as though asking her to split it had created more of a headache for them. Okay. And there was no thank you. Mm -hmm. And I also don't even know if she split it with the other staff. Mm -hmm. So none of that goodness that I wanted to feel for totally selfish reasons of giving what I considered a chunky tip came back to me. And as I walked out, I was like, I shouldn't have done that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I, I, I realize I'm, so, in a way, I sound like an asshole. Like, of course, if the money, they deserved it. And it's that, it's that famous, I don't even know, some John Wooden quote or something where like, you know, the people who work hard when no one's watching or do good things when it's, the, do good things when no one is watching that mm -hmm. are, are the best or something. It's like, you should tip, you should do these things, not because you'll get credit. I think Seinfeld's also done this where it's like if there's a tip jar on a, at a coffee shop and you go to put the money right, in you just as sure the they see it. barista turns their back, you'll wait yeah, and then drop it in so they can see it. You want the you want credit. To, you just of, want them to see at least. Of course you want the credit. But it's like a tree fell in the woods thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need, someone needs to witness it happening. Now, let's also just acknowledge while $100 is a lot of money, split amongst you know five people, it's not that much. Okay. But it's still more than you need to give. You didn't need to give them anything. Yes. And give them a $20 tip. I'm sure there's comedians who tip their green room person 20 bucks. Not to mention, which is, I had which is been, too low. I had been tipping every night. That's I tipped the every green night. person. Yeah, yeah. But like the at the end bucks. of the weekend, they'll give a 20 bucks. Pro I bet there's yeah, people who do that. Totally. Um, or don't tip at all. So to give context, yeah, it's unusual to tip the kind of greater staff. So in theory, it is a nice gesture. Uh, but yeah, it, is, it can be kind of surprising when you over, when you over tip or tip when you don't need to and people don't. No, don't like get excited there had been <laughs> specific people on the staff that i was thinking of when i thought i should give this mm -hmm. tip mm -hmm. um who had gone above and beyond had set aside really good seats for my parents you know made sure that they were guided and greeted and all that oh just little things and the tech guy was amazing the sound booth guy they just they everything was set up was so well run and i thought these are the people and the person I gave it to, I hadn't had much interaction with. Mm. And I, I don't know. It just, I, I walked out being like, I probably should have found a way to break up that hundred and then hand out the twenties individually, both mm. because then the money would have found its intended recipient. And also I would have gotten five X <laughs> the validation <laughs> that I sought so desperately. Is there a chance that there were like way more employees than you thought? Possibly. And that that. What that, am I supposed to do? What's the amount then? Hundred bucks is uh, giving a hundred dollar bill at the end of a weekend seems fair to me. To five people, if there's like, what if there's like bus I, boys and like, I'm just I'm wondering why that would have been greeted with any sort of like, why that would have been controversial. I it, can't wrap my head. My guess it. is that they would like closed the register and that she was now going to have to have a hard uh -huh, time. Uh -huh. Because I said, can you break this up? And, 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 you know, do you guys split tips? Do you pool tips? Which right. I assumed they did. Because most places do. Or if right. they don't, they can. Right. And I don't think it was the amount of money that she was 
nonplussed. But were about. they all the wait staff? This group that you were addressing? It was like manager, okay. bartender, right. sound. I don't know. So a lot. Of, so there. maybe yeah. Maybe like a lot of those people don't normally get tipped. So pooling them is like a new thing. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I actually don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, you're like I just shouldn't have done this. This clearly wasn't enough money to make an impact. Giving more would have been weird. Giving and like you yeah. didn't need to give them anything. Yeah. Um, that sucks. <laughs> I almost got hit by a car yesterday. What? This was bad. Walking. I was on a city bike. Got to be careful. This was really bad, dude. This was an interesting moment in my life. An important moment. Okay. Um, Are you wearing your little helmet? So here's what it was. I jogged to this hill at the at the for, that separates sort of Brooklyn Heights from Dumbo. There's a big steep hill, and I was Is planning it called Vinegar Hill. No, that's the other, the other way. direction. Okay. Um, but this hill is steep and occasionally in my life I've used it for fitness and I was planning to just do a long jog, but I, I got to the hill, which was already kind of far away. And I said, I don't want to do the long jog. So I'm going to do hill sprints. And I ran up the hill eight times and I got to the top and then I would walk down. And as soon as I got to the bottom, I would run up again and I would time myself each time I had to do it under 40 seconds. And uh, I was listening to good music. And then when I got to the top for my last one, I was really worn out. And so I got, instead of jogging back home, I got on a city bike because they had a station right at the top of the hill. And I kept my earbuds in. Mm. So I was riding a bike with headphones on, which is a really dangerous thing. Because, first of all, I was worn out and sort of panting with that head high and body fatigue where at the end of a workout, you just don't have your senses about, you know, you're not mm. really thinking. Plus, I was in the zone of the music. And I biked home, and I would say that 90% of the bike ride home was along walking paths along the water. So it was just sort of slowly meandering biking dodging people weaving in and out on the way home i biked over a five dollar bill stopped and picked it up nice. i found a five dollar bill i thought i'm going to talk about that on the podcast <laughs> that's how things that's how well things are going right now i'm finding money that's great keep going quiet streets of dumbo i get to the last 20 feet i'm sort of not even thinking i've got my headphones in uh there's the bike station the city bike station is on my left and i don't even realize it but i'm kind of biking in the middle of the street on a one-way street and so a car an uber i can't hear it i have no idea that it's behind me has clearly been like trying to get around me decides to pass me on the left right mm -hmm. normally well, that's important because um, the, the city bike station was on the left. And I see an open dock, and I immediately turn uh, to bring the bike into the dock. And the car... Oh, God. He's coming straight at you. T-bone. He's right behind me, but he's trying to pass me on right, the left. Right, And so I think he came very, very, very close. Ooh. And when he was trying to pass me, he, he was, like, accelerating. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And so thank God for this driver who slammed on his brakes, stopped trying to pass me because I had just right. basically made a left turn in the middle of the street because I couldn't hear him. Yeah. But I see him and I park the bike. The driver is like saying something. I take my head. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. In the back seat, there was a woman with her young daughters. And they were looking out like, oh, my God, we almost oh killed God. a guy. And then a guy from across the street who was a really cool-looking dude, cool sneakers on, he goes, man, that was almost it for you. Wow. Did you even, were you unsure until he said that? Correct. Wow. That drove the point home. He goes, that would have been it. That's fucked up, dude. He goes, you have no idea, like, you have no idea how close that was, and you would have been done. 
Now, I don't know exactly how he knew that. It, it don't, you know, it just felt like I wasn't wearing my helmet because I'd, I'd come from a run. And uh, that happened, and I, I got mean, He up. was accelerating. You would, yeah, and the way you're describing it, you would have been fucked. Right? Uh, yeah. Dead yeah. or quality of life very much lower Real after bad. surviving. Real bad. Oy. Not walking down the aisle at my wedding, you know. Damn, dude. And um, I parked the bike and just had a moment of like, Jesus, man. Reel it in. What am I doing? Like, fucking figure it out. <laughs> you can't do this. You can't be that reckless mm -hmm. at this point. There's, there's stuff to play for now. Mm -hmm. We're on the eve of life really mattering. You right. know, it's all discovery until now, at which point it's life is a bit of a job and you work for the people in your life. My life belongs not just to me anymore, but mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to Be you guys there, as dude. a member of this group, to my fiance, obviously, my parents, there's just, I can't, I can't be goofing around like that. Be careful, bro. You gotta be careful. Yeah, it was a bit of a room. bit of a come to Jesus moment. Uh, anyway, Light flash in front of your eyes. Yeah, it did. And then I looked up to the. I hate that. I hate that I do this, but I become. I'm very selectively religious. But when something fucked up happens, you become religious. I looked up to the sky and said, "Thank you." Yeah. And I feel like God's looking down and being like, "You fucking fair weather fan." <laughs> you, you you're only doing that when i get when i when i snatch you from the yeah. claws of death mm -hmm. but you're not one of my you're not one of my supporters you only root for me when you're in the playoffs yeah yeah exactly when your back's up against it you're just a, a hail mary guy mm -hmm. i don't know i'm glad you reconnected with god dude yeah so um after all that you were thinking know. about the chaplain and the Uber. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> well, I wonder if it was that guy on, um, his, on his way to some other fake errand. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, dude, I'm glad you lived to tell the tale. City, yeah. City biking is not something to be taken lightly. No, no. And um, I city bike today, but I wore my helmet. Good. Very yeah. Good. All well, right. It's not like a helmet would have done much there. Well, it would. It would do a lot more than you think. Really. Because to me, it's like if I'm wearing a city bike, oh, excuse me, if I'm wearing a helmet and I'm city biking and I were to die, then there was nothing that right, could okay, have been done. Fair. You're going to die. You wear, uh, but wear if you're helmet. wearing a city a helmet and you're city biking, you're protecting your skull. Mm -hmm. And the skull, in, as far as car accidents go, is the ultimate uh, life or right. death button. Interesting. Where if that goes, you're in big trouble. True. And it, also, if you're wearing a helmet and you die, everyone will mourn your death more. Whereas if you weren't, they're like, ah, well, he wasn't wearing a helmet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, dude, before we wrap it up, I still, since I have not yet gotten to it, I want to just quickly, since probably everybody's wondering what Hill Dog, in fact, got me for my birthday. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, we will, yeah. We can wrap up with that um, so that we don't go too long here. But, um, okay, so she got me. She obviously took me to a really nice dinner or whatever. She got me these like really sick uh, shoes to go with a tuxedo. The ones that I already have were cool, but she she like got me these really sick like Gucci ones. Oh, like, what? Yeah, Gucci? They are sick. Yeah. Are you for real? Mm -hmm. Like loafers? No, but like for a tuxedo. Are they patent leather? No, but like they're like- Slip on they're, or tie? They have, they have good, laces? They're not slip on. Wait, no, not tie. They don't. No, but it's like, but like the buckle is like kind of like a it's mute. A buckle. It's like a muted gold. It's like a very cool looking. The, the shoe. Gucci, the Gucci loafer, kind of. Yes, it's like a yeah, some version of that. Um, which I don't really have. I have like a pair of shoes to go with the tuxedo. You need that, but not like a, a like fancy, not one this fancy. So that was sick. Very psyched about that. She also got me Bad Bunny tickets. Oh my god, dude! Uh, and I can't actually go the weekend he's in New York. So in another city. With the rental car taken care of as well. <laughs> Super fucking thoughtful, dude. Wow, dude. Um, that is sick. You know? So very, very, very thoughtful and sweet. That's awesome. And, uh, today she was kind of talking about, so we have to go to a wedding in Europe, a couple. Uh, but one of them, we, uh, we have like a plan to like add a couple days on the front and the back end or whatever. And she's like, well, maybe I can use my travel stipend uh, 
to cover like whatever some of the stuff or something and i was like can you not like do any more like yeah. please yeah, yeah, let yeah. me like let us just do this normal like yeah <laughs> I feel guilty. Now, the only thing I would say to you is to, um, sorry. What was he doing? I was gripping the mic, uh. talking really loud. The only thing I would say to you is that recall the feeling that you have when you give a good gift. That's good for you, too. It's not, yeah, that's true. So I'm sure that she does feel good giving you gifts, too. She really did a good job. Yeah, she, really, really She's really not thoughtful. keeping score, probably. Really thoughtful. Yeah, knowing her as I do. <laughs> Even though she is from the Midwest. Uh, let's take it out. That's Oops the Podcast. That is Oops the Podcast. That's Oops the Podcast, guys. Gee, you got anything fun coming up? Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff in July. We're still locking in the dates, but it looks like I'm going to be in Tampa from the 14th to the 17th um, doing a bunch of shows in the area. So I'd love to see you there. Those tickets are coming soon. Boston, the 25th. That, those tickets are coming soon, too. Seattle, the 28th. Uh, and then some more stuff coming up, too. Wow. Awesome. All on my website. I've got Apple, Appleton, Wisconsin, sort of the last stop on my tour for now, uh, which I'm, I'm very glad to uh, have it be coming to an end. But it's been amazing. Uh, Skyline Comedy Club. Tickets for that, FrancisSellis.com. Hope to see you guys there. That's June 13th, June 12th and 11th and 13th, maybe. Uh, love you all. Thank you so much. See you guys soon.